So I got this comment the other day on a video and basically someone was saying that my beginner tutorial was going too fast. So I'm gonna slow things down today and we're gonna do a complete Insta360 studio tutorial for desktop and I'm gonna go as slow as possible and I'm gonna try and cover every single point in painstaking detail at a moderate pace so you can understand it and learn how to reframe your 360 videos. Before we jump into this, make sure you go and grab my video settings cheat sheet as well. This is going to give you access to all my best settings on a one page cheat sheet. Okay, so before we get into reframing and editing our videos, the first thing we need to do is download Insta360 Studio, or the latest version of that. So you want to go to insta360.com forward slash download. And there's two ways you can even do this. Just grab the software here or select the camera that you have, click software and download the relevant version of Insta360 Studio here and install it and open it up. And this is basically what it will look like when you do that. It's super basic. And on the left here is where we have where all our 360 files will be. And on the right here, this is where we're going to click to add a file or files to work with. For this test, we're going to click here, this plus button, and we're going to add a file. Now my strong recommendation before you start reframing your videos, back up your 360 videos to a hard drive or your computer before you do this. Now, right now, this is my SD card plugged into my camera. And I'm just going to show you through like editing from the SD card. But if you want a smoother process editing, I probably would highly recommend you just first of all, drag these files onto your computer and then import them into Insta360 Studio because it's going to run faster and it's going to be less likely to corrupt any files or anything like that. So let's just grab a file to work with. I'm just going to pick one. Okay, let's grab, okay, let's grab this one. This is a mountain bike video of mine. Great for a demonstration. It's loaded the video in here. And for us to reframe our videos, we need to be on this tab here, which is reframe. We have the 360 view here, which is the whole 360 view, which is not really much use to us. So we want to click reframe. Then what we want to do, we want to decide what aspect ratio we want. So this is nine by 16. Great for social media posts like Instagram, Reels, YouTube Shorts, or we have 16 by nine or a whole host of other ratios. They're the two main ones I use. So I use this for YouTube. Now you'll notice this is a bit of a skew angle. So we're going to adjust that in a second. I'm just going to walk you through what everything does on the screen first. So obviously here we have our preview window and right now I'm just dragging the mouse around my trackpad with one finger to drag where the angle is going to be. Then underneath we have our timeline. So this is going to allow us to scrub through the video in its, its hole. And then we have some buttons here where we can add a keyframe, we can do deep tracking, we can do time shift and we can do motion ND effect. So on the right here, we have some different tools under stabilization. So we can decide if we want direction lock on or tilt recovery. I love using tilt recovery because I think it gives a very smooth, uh, realistic feel, especially for action sports and mountain biking. Direction lock is just basically where you want to lock the direction of the camera to point one way. So I'll explain this when we start reframing. Then we can uh, add on our accessories if we're using any. So if we tell the software we're using a lens guard, it will slightly adjust different things in here. So I don't use lens guard. I don't use a dive case. I don't use a thermo grip cover. And I always just leave the stitching optimization either on AI stitching or optimal flow stitching. I haven't really noticed too much of a difference between those two. And I leave all these settings the same. Then we have media processing. So under this is where you can do a bit of color grading. So we can play around with color plus. We can play around with the clarity and then adjust all the different aspects of our color profile. So we've got highlights, highlights, exposure, shadows, contrast, all this stuff. And then we can add motion ND as well. So this is like a motion effect. Great for adding like a speed element in your video. And then we can tweak the audio. Now, I don't, I've never really used this either. I just leave it as close. But again, you may want to play around with that depending on where you're shooting, but you shouldn't need to if you shoot on the X5 camera. You can add a watermark here. Again, 
I do not know why you would want to add one, but it's there if you want to. Clip management, you can manage all your clips here, and then this is all the file properties of the file you are editing. So let's start our reframing process. So we want to go back to the first frame in the video. And first of all, we want to decide which part of the video we want to reframe. So I'm just going to rotate my mouse around and I'm going to use the command button. And I'm going to just pull this around so it looks a little bit less disorienting. And I'm now just going to scroll through the video oh, just to look where we want to reframe. So I'm just going to do, I'm going to add, actually I'm going to just press command and left bracket. So we're going to trim the start of the clip. And then I'm going to do a 20 second clip ish and then i'm going to do the end bracket so that's our 20 second clip i'm going to zoom in a little bit here the timeline so we get this full there and now i'm going to go back to the start of our timeline so we can start reframing so back to start and i'm going to rotate this again for some reason it didn't, didn't hold i'm just using command and my finger on my trackpad and i'm going to add a keyframe look at this button here and you'll notice this brings up a whole host of different uh, editing tools. So we've got all these different presets in here, Tiny Planet, Mega, Ultra Wide, D-Warp, Linear. I like to start on Mega for mountain biking and I like to actually pull the field of view out so we get more field of view. Probably go a little bit further in because that's cropping there. Uh, bring the distortion down actually. Then bring this out and then just position it where you want. And again, you can adjust the roll here. You can adjust all these tilts and everything. So have a play around. And once you're happy with your first keyframe, you want to just press space bar to play the clip and just see, first of all, what it looks like. This is kind of a trial and error thing. Okay, so you see how the camera isn't actually following my handlebars. So this is something we need to fix. We currently have tilt recovery on, so this should do that, but for some reason it hasn't. So we're going to add another keyframe. And this can be anywhere between the first keyframe and before the first turning direction. So I'm going to add one here. I'm going to rotate it again. And get this all lined up. And I'll keyframe there. Now if we play it. I'm just going to do this again. Now this should. There we go. Now it's tracking. So now... Can you see now how it's actually tracking the keyframe metrics? Which is really good. So that's how you use tilt recovery when you are reframing your videos. Now we've got all sorts of different things we can do here. And look, I'm going to show you how to add motion ND to your clip. If you click Motion ND, it says when the Motion ND effect is turned on, it only takes effect during playback and export. So if we go to Media Processing tab here, we can now play around with the spread and intensity. So if I turn this all the way up, you will see how blurry it starts to look, which is a bit unrealistic. But we can fine tune this, the spread and the intensity down a bit. Play it again. And you'll see now it's starting to look a little bit more realistic. Probably it's still a little bit too much, actually. Just a little bit of a subtle that touch. That's pretty cool. And then you want to work through your clips doing exactly this. Now, if you are doing a selfie or you're vlogging or things like that, you may want to use Deep Track here. So if you click Deep Track, you can actually... You can't apply deep track where there's a keyframe, which is just told me. So if I um, delete this keyframe a second, delete this keyframe, ignore the work we've just done so far, and say there's a subject in the video, like here in front of me, that we want to follow and track, what we can do is we can actually draw a square. Just adjust these parameters a second, just roughly. We can uh, we can draw a square. Oh, keyframe. 
So drag with the left mouse button to select the tracking target or click the automatic identify tracking target. So it's identified something here, but it's not a target. We're just going to draw a box around our biking friend here. And it should start to track the rider through the clip. Okay, let's just try again. Again, this might be because I'm actually editing on my SD card. Okay, so with a mountain bike clip, this is going to be quite difficult. But for example, let me just open another clip to show you this. Let's just grab another clip I have. Um, it's me, hello. Here. So here I am. Um, we can just click deep track and we can it's already identified me here so if I now just click that you'll see it's actually tracking me and keeping me center frame so this is a great tool for vlogging great for adventure travel just makes it so much easier and saves you a ton of time so you don't have to keep adding keyframes so if I click stop tracking I'll show you now it just goes through it Now, once you're happy with your clip, it comes to exporting it. So that's basically how you reframe. But exporting, there's some key settings that I want to bring up. So you click export here. And then we've got all these different options to choose from. So first of all, name your file. I'm going to call this test. Decide where you want the file to be saved, the so file path. And then you can also create parameters. So if you're going to be reframing multiple videos, then it makes sense to have a parameter that you can just click and it will just apply these parameters to every video when you export. So it just saves you more ton of time. You can just click edit here and you can actually re rename and create your presets. So for video export settings, I'm just gonna go for usually about 100 bit rates or megabytes bit rate. Um, the resolution's generally at 4K. Then we have an encoding format. So H.264 is generally the one I would go for and recommend for most people. It's one that's compatible with pretty much every device. H.265 is probably better for more efficiency. So either one of those is completely fine. And then ProRes 422 is the complete file and all its data. So you can see that the file size jumps up dramatically, but this is gonna be the absolute best quality when you export, but the file size is huge. Um, from there, you just want to click on Start Export and it will save it to the destination. And then you have access to your flat video not 360 video your flat video so i hope that was useful if you have any questions about reframing 360 videos on desktop or even mobile drop them in the comments below and make sure you go and grab my video settings cheat sheet here that will be linked below it's got all my best settings no matter where you're shooting what you're shooting see you next video guys